Well, welcome to the Valley Hoops Insider podcast, part of the Valley Hoops Insider website. And this is a special edition of uh, Voices of the Valley. We've got the brand new play-by-play broadcaster from the Belmont Bruins joining us today, John Freeman. And it's going to be exciting to get to know him and interesting to learn about some of his background. Of course, those Belmont Bruins are going to be spectacular again this coming season. It's just kind of like the sun rises in the east and water is wet and Belmont's going to win 25 games and contend for the OVC championship. And so John Freeman's going to have that ringside seat to an outstanding Ohio Valley Conference basketball team. And we bring John into the conversation now. And John, uh, welcome to Voices of the Valley. And uh, thanks for taking time with us. But talk about the the journey to become the Belmont Bruins broadcaster. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. This is part of the initiation process, <laughs> right? I've got to come on to to the podcast as yeah, the new guy. Go. Uh, so hopefully I'll, I'll do all right in my debut here, but, uh, man, it's been a long journey. Uh, and it, it's, it's been one that's led me to a great destination, but, uh, I grew up in a small town in Virginia and fell in love with basketball on the radio. Cause that's all we could listen to yeah, at about five o'clock at night and on. Uh, and I've just always wanted to be a, a sports broadcaster and did it pretty extensively in college and have had a, a, a really kind of lucky knack of being in the right place at the right time uh, for a lot of jobs and, and done my best to, to climb the ladder. And I feel like with this Belmont job, uh, I'm, I'm at the top of the ladder. I mean, this is one of the premier jobs uh, in broadcasting uh, in mid majors. And in my opinion, in the country uh, in general. So I can't wait to get it started. Uh, I've lived in Nashville for about five or six years now and in, in Belmont. Um, interestingly enough, when I moved, my wife works at, at the local hospital here. And when I moved, I, I abandoned a lot of broadcasting that I had established in Virginia. I was calling division one basketball. I was calling um, soccer. ACC network was just starting and I moved to Nashville for love. Uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, a lot of people go to Nashville for yeah, love. Yeah. <laughs> and only some of them find it, but, uh, but I, I moved to Nashville without anything. And I remember emailing um, every single sports information director um, of the local schools in Nashville, um, saying, Hey, here I am new broadcaster. Here's my tape here. Um, the first one that I heard back from was Greg Sage at Belmont. And I, I tell him this every single time I see him, I'm going to see a lot of him this year. Cause he's my broadcast partner. Right. Uh, and this is five or six years ago. And he was the only one that said, I don't have anything for you, but I'd be happy to eat lunch. Uh, and we went and got lunch, and he was the first person in Nashville sports media uh, or with the schools or any sports program uh, to kind of welcome me to the city. And ever since then, it's it's been developing that relationship with him. And now we uh, we get to have a whole lot of lunches together uh, <laughs> as broadcast partners. So I'm forever grateful for the opportunity. And it's because of people like Greg. It's, it's, it's the Belmont vibe uh, that I've noticed. It's such a welcoming school. Um, and obviously, as, as you noted, one that's got quite the basketball tradition, death taxes and Belmont basketball contending for the OVC championship. Absolutely. Sage is good people. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned coming to Nashville and you do some of that professional soccer there. You did that also in Virginia. Um, and you, uh, you know, high levels. I mean, like you were part of the 2019, uh, Virginia NCAA tournament stuff. And so you've seen some stuff you've been around jazz, but like you say, it's, Sometimes it's a journey to get that next job. Listen, I've written more uh, applications and letters that I've gotten a, Harry, you're a really great, get, great guy, but we don't want you responses. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I know that journey. I've been there for sure. Uh, and to be honest, I thought I was going to hear that, that with, <laughs> with the Belmont job. <laughs> Greg called me up and he's like five minutes into the phone call after I'd interviewed and everything. And we had some good candidates, you know, uh, it's a really big job. And I was like, oh, he's letting me down. Um, I'm about to get the the big, big uh, disappointed. You know, we, we've gone with someone else. And then he said, we want you to be the next voice of the the Bruins or the, the lead commentator. And awesome. I, I mean, the, the hair on my arms stood up and I had this such an organic, such an organic reaction. The play by play guys want to be formal and um, professional in a way. And 
I was doing my best not to just sound like a little kid running around the room. Um, but there was, there was a lot of silent fist pumps and, uh, ran downstairs and and told my wife and, uh, I'm just thrilled. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it right now. I am. Uh, We got a long way to go in this interview. I'm already nervous in it. (laughs) Well, once you get in the seat, you'll be fine, but it's the anticipation. Uh, but obviously you're a soccer guy at some level. I, I went and listened to some of your highlights and, and clips and stuff of you calling soccer games there. Uh, is that, and, and you've done multiple sports all over the place, ACC network, as you mentioned, Virginia, Virginia Commonwealth, I think too. Yeah. Um, lots of different sports is basketball, the primary love, or is it just the best job you have right now? <laughs> Uh, I always love whatever sports in season. Um, I think I said this on a different podcast. Somebody said, you know, like, do you want to do soccer for the rest of your life? Do you want to do basketball for the rest of your life? And my answer is like, why do I have to choose? Right. Um, I like whatever sports right in front of me. Um, and I, I can guarantee you that when I'm sitting at a, a Belmont game on November 9th at Ohio and Athens, Ohio for the season opener, there's nowhere else I'd rather be in the world than right there uh, in that seat. So as a broadcaster, we have a tendency to always be looking ahead to the the Mm. next stop or the next game. And, um, especially for, for a program like Belmont, there's probably a tendency to say, what's the ultimate journey of this season? Are the obvious question is, are they going to make the tournament and what can they do there? Mm. Um, but to do that would be to look past all the awesome trips and all the awesome games that are part of it. Um, And if you're so focused on the end destination, then you lose track of just how amazing the journey is. So um, to go back to your original question, you know, are you a soccer guy? Are you a basketball guy? I'm along for the journey in both. Uh, And they're like children. You know, you don't love one more than the other one. (laughs) I only have four of those. So I understand. (laughs) I totally understand. Talk about your time at Virginia and, and talk a little bit about Tony Bennett. Oh, my gosh. He is... He's a rock star. Um, I, I had the opportunity. So Virginia, um, schools that have football programs, uh, and Virginia was also getting into um, doing a lot of television production broadcast as well, uh, which I was able to get in on a few of those. But also when football season overlaps with basketball, there's just a lot of games and people mm-hmm. and uh, spots to be filled. So I had the chance um, to do several Virginia games um, during that national championship season. And uh, one one trip that I remember the most is a trip to uh, the Bahamas for the, I think it was the Bad Boy Mowers Great Atlantis <laughs> shootout. It's the one where it's in a ballroom. And yes, yes. You walk through this casino to get there. And it's, it's a strange, fun tournament. Um, but you spend so much time traveling with these people. Uh, and for Coach Bennett, who is... I mean, in Charlottesville, it's Charlottesville, Virginia is where the University of Virginia is. It's it's like Thomas Jefferson lived there uh, and uh, James Monroe lived you know, 20, 20 miles outside. And like the Declaration of Independence was written there. And there's all these like famous historical figures like Tony Bennett is pretty close to that level. Um, <laughs> if you say the word Tony Bennett in Charlottesville, like that is that is an icon um, to the extent where um, I remember Virginia was uh, doing like a fundraiser for some sort of charity and they sold a lunch with Tony Bennett where you literally went to his office and ate bagels with him for an hour (laughs) and they sold it for like $40,000. Wow. Um, And I'm sitting there being like, well, I'm doing, you know, three 15 minute interviews with Tony Bennett for each, you know, show that we put on in this tournament. Like that's a $30,000 value. Um, but you, you weren't getting paid it. that though, were you? What's that? No, I didn't get paid that, nor did I have to pay it. Uh, but it, he's that kind of guy where you, you walk in for this pregame interview and you're at Atlantis and I, I brought my dad to that tournament. And, um, before you even taught basketball, he just, how's your dad? Is he having a good time? You know, how's your family doing? Yeah. Um, it, it's stuff like that where he just has such a, a human touch and, um, such an interest in everybody involved in the, bro- uh, in the broadcast, in the program, in the university, in the town. Um, that I haven't had uh, much experience with Rick Bird of Belmont, but I've heard he's the same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the Belmont way from, from what I've, I've seen uh, in my limited time. And, and I hope to, to obviously get to know everybody more, but there's that family aspect to it. There's that, that people part of the program. Um, and for as much 
you know, good as I've experienced with coach Bennett, I heard it's uh, just as equal on, on Belmont Boulevard. Yeah. They're an amazing program, amazing people there as well. Brad Soderberg was the head coach at St. Louis university and uh, is an assistant there yeah. in Virginia. And uh, I ran into those guys at some NCAA tournament, spent a half hour with Brad one day, just catching up, you know, because uh, we were old friends from when he was around here. I had a funny interview with him back when he was the head coach here. We talked all through the basketball game, and but my youngest was playing fifth grade basketball or third grade basketball mm -hmm. or something. And I said, okay, Brad, I'm done with all that stuff. I have to talk to you about something important. I said, I'm coaching third grade basketball. What do I do now? And so he gave me a few press. tips. And <laughs> Always said, press. <laughs> he, said, he said, just shoot it every time. Tell your guys, shoot it every time they touch it. Cause you're going to score more on rebounds than you are on the shots. Yeah. So, so that's what we implemented, you know, the Brad Soderberg offense, but uh, he's a great guy like that as well. Um, so you are now at Belmont and you, you bounced around the Southeast a little bit. The ACC network, you mentioned you got involved there. Uh, as it was kind of opening up, it's, it is a wild new world in the broadcasting world. There's a network for everything and everything is on ESPN plus or you or two or three or 12 and, and the radio. And, and some people think radio is a little bit of a dying, um, you know, it's struggling to find its niche. Your thoughts about radio in general and radio broadcast. Yeah. I mean, people are on the go though. Um, I think the, 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 benefit of, of radio these days is that no matter where you are trying to consume a game whether you're at your living room or you're on the go radio gives you the opportunity to to do it mm -hmm. um and what we're gonna have with belmont what they've had is is streaming um when i do nashville soccer games uh we're live on you know over the air radio but we also stream um and so much of our audience comes from streaming people on the go who want to hear you know the last 10 minutes of a game or they just need a score update mm -hmm. or they need entertainment for a two-hour drive or they're in the airport i think there's a major need for um uh, for radio uh, and, and i hope they'll continue to be um we're still going to do espn plus games for for belmont home um but there there is a spot for radio and there will continue to be um and the other thing about radio is and what i enjoy about uh doing games on radio uh, much more than TV is that your audience is very concentrated. Yep. Um, so when Belmont, you know, goes to LSU uh, on you know, Monday, November 22nd, um, that game is going to be on TV, obviously. I mean, it's an LSU game, so I'm sure it'll be accessible somewhere. LSU clearly has its own radio network. Um, so I don't really have to be 50-50 when I'm on the radio Absolutely. for Belmont. If you're tuning into the Belmont broadcast, you're probably, you know, a, a Belmont fan or someone with an, an interest in Belmont. Uh, and that's some of the excitement and uh, you know, glory of, of local radio that we have extra space to tell, tell the Belmont story. Uh, not that we're going to you know, discount other teams, but I'm also not going to go into the backstory of the backup point guard for, for LSU in the way that I would tell <laughs> Uh, and want to tell um, to our audience all the all the interesting stories that you'll see at Belmont. You have been around. You've done a lot of stuff. And I, frankly, I'm a radio guy more than a TV guy. I end up doing some TV things for the Missouri Valley Conference. But I'm a radio guy at heart. And, and like I love that medium and telling the story and trying to feel the story through the airwaves. I think it's I think it's a different art form than the television side. Do you agree? Oh, completely. Um, and the exciting part about Belmont is I'll have the, the opportunity to kind of refine both crafts. Mm. Um, so we've got the TV at, at home and the, the audio stream or radio on the road. Um, but there's so much more of a responsibility for the radio guy or, or woman. I don't want to say guys as, mm -hmm. as if it's a, a male dominated, um, genre, but when you look at, at play by play broadcasters on TV, you're much more of a facilitator. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've got a producer in your ear and that person is the real boss mm -hmm. uh, and you are a, a conduit of, of how they want the broadcast to go and look uh, with radio it's your show uh, and there, there's something exciting about that um, the other thing too that I, I love about about radio is um, I feel like it, it just has a a bit of lasting power to it mm -hmm. and uh, an eternal quality um, so you think back to some just really historic calls in the sports world. So many of them are on radio and 
if someone hangs up a you know last second prayer in March Madness for Belmont, I think people are going to be pretty interested in what the radio call sounded like. And you hear that with you know, small schools that succeed in March. You you often hear just the passion that comes out of of their radio crew. But uh, I, I'm excited for for towing both lines. Uh, radio is a a lot more room for for improvisation and style and uh, not to say that we won't be energetic and stylish on TV, but uh, we do have a responsibility a bit more for the TV broadcast at home to cater to the general audience. Like I would never want to, um, I mean, even a Murray state fan or a SEMO or Austin P I wouldn't want them to watch the TV stream um, and, and be displeased with the, with the announcers and feel like we didn't do their school justice as well. You just got the job a couple of weeks ago, maybe. I mean, at least it was announced just in the last couple of weeks. Uh, how much, how close, how much have you been introduced to Casey Alexander, the players? I mean, I, there's probably a journey there, and they've barely begun to start practice as well. Just where are you in that process of getting to know the Bruin basketball program? Yeah, I, I, I get closer like every single time. Like I, you know, when I first moved here, I was like walking around Belmont, and then it's like I went to a game, and now I'm like, come on into the practice facility. And now it's like, come on into practice. Um, I, I've uh, taken a big tour of the Crockett Center, which is the new um, practice facility and weight room. Amazing facility, mm. brand new. Um, and it's going to take, oh, it's, it's a next level place. Um, and it's now being implemented this season. Um, I had a chance to meet the coaches, Scott Corley, the athletic director, emceed an event already. Um, and I'll tell you this, I got the Belmont job uh, I think on a, I think Greg called me maybe on a, a Thursday and, um, we announced that that Monday, um, I cannot even begin to express how many people from Belmont that I didn't know that reached out to me, uh, yeah. texting. I mean, coach Alexander sent me like a two paragraph text the day it came out. Um, uh, and, and I hadn't met him before. I mean, I think that again, speaks mm -hmm. to that family aspect that, that I'm so grateful to be a part of. It's amazing. I think what Belmont's been able to accomplish, their record is just stunning. I'm going to do a whole big yeah. story on them here in the next week or so um, launching into the season. But uh, mm -hmm. they're like, as you mentioned, the class and the way they do it. I was talking to Southern Illinois Edwardsville head coach, Brian Baroni <laughs> last week, and we were talking about their interactions with Belmont. And he said, they are just clinical. They just, <laughs> they're, they're precise. They do their things the right way over and over and over again. And, and that's the way Coach Bird did. Of course, Casey played there and coached with him and, and now is, is coaching it himself. And, and they are an amazing basketball team to watch. Yeah, it's funny. So I, I tour the Crockett Center, which is practice facilities, new locker rooms, um, player lounge, study rooms, and then the brand new weight room, uh, which is looks right out onto the practice court. So amazing facility. If, if I'm sure you can Google Crockett Center. Or it's on Belmont's website. And you can see pictures of it. Um, and I, I take this tour and I, I'm getting like a, a guided tour from Greg and uh, meeting all the staff. And uh, I just remember at the end of it, I remarked, like I went through the locker room, the weight room, all of it. I'm like, the training facility, not a single thing is out of place. Wow. Like every pair of scissors in the training room is exactly symmetrically where it's supposed <laughs> to go. Like everything, it, like all the foam rollers are exactly upright and spaced out perfectly. Um, it is the tidiest facility. Uh, and I know that's a, maybe even a silly observation to make, but when you talk about just how efficient and on point this program is, and this goes for all the sports at Belmont because the facility services other sports, um, it's the little things like that where mm. you notice them and then you realize that's the way things are. Um, this program picks up after itself and it, it looks after its people and it, it looks after its facilities. Um, and, and I think all of that, you know, from the, from the high level administrative part leaks all the way down to how the scissors are placed in the training room. So does John Freeman have catch phrases? What I mean <laughs> is long three pointer or a dunk no. or what, what can we anticipate? Come on. You can let me in a little bit. I don't, I don't think I have a catch phrase. Um, I pride myself on trying to have 
a large assortment of words to be able to describe the action. <laughs> so I wish I was prepared for that question. I would I would have brought up my big basketball thesaurus. There you go. Um, so you'll you'll see me at games, and every play by play guy has got like a different um, setup of how they do boards and everything. Um, for me, I put a roster for one team and I fill out notes on it and everything. And another, and I put them on little like easels. So they, they pop up on the, um, table. So I don't have to look down as far if I need to reference anything. And then I have a third easel and it's all these different words that I've come up with during all my years. And it's, it's a growing list of different verbs to say basically the same basketball things shot pass dribble um so for shot for shot it'll be heaves launches let's fly unloads pulls the trigger i mean they, you can just go down and down and down um and then i'll i'll think of something you know on a tuesday in september a different way to say run um you know he canters he trots uh he flies he pedals and I'll write these down on the list and that, that thesaurus is ever growing. So you'll, you'll see it. If you ever see me at a game, two rosters and a standing thesaurus that I'll reference. But uh, <laughs> one thing you won't see on it is catchphrases. I don't no have catchphrases. A, I don't have a go-to catchphrase, although I'm taking suggestions. There you go. I let's see. One of the, one of the, I listened to some of your highlights. Galloped was in there too. Somebody was galloping up the court or something like that. Yeah. I probably got like on a horse kick. Like I was watching equestrian <laughs> in the Olympics. I was like, well, what are their phrases here? We've got gallop, we've got canter, we've, you yeah. know, we've got maneuver, we've got jump. Um, it, it also just keeps me engaged. Absolutely. If you feel like you're showing up and saying the exact same thing on every single game, um, you end up becoming a bit robotic, and that's something I'd, I'd never want to do. Do you enjoy the travel part of it? You and I talked before uh, we started this that sometimes like a holiday will come or something, and that's not as advantageous for family or whatever, but, but do you enjoy the travel part of it? I do. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very nice that you acknowledge that part um, because it is, it is hard. Um, you know, I'm going to miss New Year's with my wife. Uh, we're going to be in, in Illinois because we have a game in uh, on the 30th and the first. Um, but the travel is it, travel usually in, in basketball at this level um, leads you to some places um, that you probably wouldn't go, you know, on vacation. You wouldn't um, go to I don't Clarksville, mean that. Illinois for vacation. Yeah, but in the end, those are some of the places where you have these really cool memories and you get a better understanding of, you know, what middle America looks like. And mm -hmm. um, I've just been so fortunate to travel to, to so many different places and be able to, you know, when a news event happens, you say like, I've been there and I, I understand that town or, mm. um, or if somebody, I, I meet somebody and they're from somewhere, there's a pretty good chance I'm, I've probably been there. Um, and for, for the OVC or, or Belmont schedule coming up, you know, I haven't been to Baton Rouge, uh, for, for LSU. I haven't been to Athens, Ohio, and, uh, I'm sure it's a lovely town. It's not somewhere that I'm going to schedule a week long vacation on, uh, most likely. Um, but I, I really look forward to, to just experiencing a lot of these, these places on a, um, drive in and drive out and get the best 24 hour tour of them that you can. Um, and that's one of the great benefits of the job. And we're going to Disney world. I was going <laughs> to say, you're is, yeah. is in a nice place. <laughs> yeah. I'll be thinking of that question when I'm on the, uh, what tower of terror, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> when Harry asked me if I like the travel, uh, yeah. uh, that's part of it. So we got the Disney world tournament and, um, and then who knows, you know, if, if you put together a big postseason run and, any of these postseason tournaments, then you go from you know, more regional matchups to potentially some really wild national matchups as well. Well, John, we'll bump into each other. I know uh, you guys play St. Louis and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I think you get Drake maybe at the MTE and uh, there's just going to be different places where we're, we're going to overlap. And, and so I really wanted to get to know you a little bit, introduce you to our readers and listeners and watchers on the website here. Uh, because as you know, as you're going to get to know, the OVC people love the OVC. It's like they they like own it. I mean, it's their conference, you know. And so I wanted them to get to see you a little bit behind the scenes. Oh, I can't wait. And I, the OVC, before I was immersed in it, um, I, I was certainly aware of that passion that you speak of. Um, 
And when the conference tournament rolls around and you see, you know, a game winning shot from it, you usually see a, an absolutely packed arena yep. and the passion that comes out of that conference. Some of the players that have come out of this conference, mm -hmm. um, I will say as somebody who didn't grow up on, uh, you know, basketball in this region and is now a, you know, a really um, grateful you know, person who's joined that, that family uh, uh, of OVC basketball and, and Tennessee basketball and beyond. Um, I will say that it does have a reputation beyond just this region. Um, and that, that passion from some of these schools and for the tournament and for these players is, is not something that's normal um, in a good way. Um, and it's not something that you get across America. So to, to be part of it and get to dabble my foot in it, uh, I, will, I will certainly enjoy that. And I definitely want the tour of St. Louis when I visit. Oh, there you go. The, uh, so final thing. So I think I read wife's name, Christy. Yeah, yeah. You moved in, moved to Nashville for love. You told us that earlier. Tell us about her and tell us about your family. Oh man, um, she's at work right now. Uh, sometimes she she's say home anything. And, uh, oh, she's the best. Yeah, um, just delightful, delightful person, and somebody who's so tolerant of of what I do. Um, there, there's a difference between um, you know spouses who who tolerate what somebody does and uh, spouses who support it. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a hard business and it's one that takes a lot of time. Um, it, it has a lot of failures and sometimes, you know, I need somebody to lean on and she is not somebody who just tolerates the broadcasting. She's someone who supports it. And that is so selfless of her. And it, it says so much of her and for her day job, she's a, um, she's a nurse anesthetist. So that says just mm -hmm. as much as you need to know about her, uh, totally caring individual, uh, and, and the love of my life, obviously. But, uh, the, the funny thing about her knows absolutely nothing about sports. Uh, we are like yin and yang. Uh, yeah, it's so funny. Um, and it's so grounding because I can uh, I can feel like sometimes sports is just this, you know, cloud that everyone's living in. And I live the highs and lows of it and then um, come home to her and, and she wants to talk about something that's a lot more important. Uh, and that's a, a great, uh, great thing to have. Uh, on yeah. your side. Absolutely. I tell my wife the stories. I say, well, this guy, and I tell him, tell her all about his background, his dad, his mother, and why this is important. And then she, yeah, loves, you know, yeah. And it really helps too, uh, because there's probably a lot of alums of all the schools that we cover that love their school, but don't necessarily love sports. Yep. Um, so how do we keep them engaged with their, their alma mater and the storytelling is, is part of it. So keeping people like that, interested and engaged and you know growing their their interests and their affection towards their school is part of the job that that you have as a writer that that i have as a broadcaster and one of the parts of it that i, I really enjoy is that challenge john appreciate your time wish you all the best we will cross paths i'm sure several times even this year uh but appreciate your time today wish you all the best at belmont absolutely i've, I've i heard st louis has some good barbecue so i'm oh, hoping you'll show me the barbecue, best barbecue great right? italian you want to get italian when you're in st louis Okay, well, I, that, now we got lunch and dinner covered, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we'll make it happen. That's John Freeman. He is the brand-new play-by-play radio broadcaster for the Belmont Bruins in the Ohio Valley Conference. I'm Harry Schrader reminding you since you've been there, make it a better place. You've been watching and listening to the Voices of the Valley podcast, part of the Valley Hoops Insider podcast.